Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Element Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial we're going to be talking about arrays within the Swift language. Now in the previous tutorial where we worked with um, creating variables in the Swift language we learnt how kind of easy and how simplified it was to create them versus creating them in Objective-C. Now creating arrays is again just as simple as creating the variables and to create a string we need to create a variable. So what we're going to simply be doing is creating a string with multiple kind of um, bits of data within it. So you can kind of think of a kind of a, an array. So what we're going to be doing is creating our array uh, with multiple bits of data in it. So you can kind of think of it as a list of um, kind of different, each line is a different kind of piece of data within our array. So what we're going to do is have all these bits of data and then we can be able to have the um, ability to single out a specific bit of data within the array. We're going to you know, learn how to add to that array and then simply display all the outcomes in the array into our console output. So what we need to do is first create our array and what we do is create our variable. So just like how we did in our variables tutorial, create our variables, and what I'm going to do in the array is have a list of cars. So I'm going to simply call this variable cars. Now like how we talked before, depending on what you equal your variable to, kind of defines what the variable is. So if I do our brackets here, our parentheses, and then in between them we do two quotation marks and a comma, space, two quotation marks, and a comma, we've now kind of set up our variable to think and know and understand that it's an array. So we learn about how we can configure and define what our variable is in our variables tutorial. So what we're going to do then, in between each quotation mark will be the piece of data uh, that we want. So in total, uh, we're going to have four. And what they're going to be is cars. So what we're going to do is simply, instead of giving you the model of the, or uh, well, the make of the car, we can do models instead. So if you're in Europe and you know your hatchbacks, then you'll probably know all of these cars. So the first one's going to be a Corsa, a Vauxhall or an Opel Corsa. We're going to have a Fiesta. Uh, again, uh, quotation marks and the comma there. We're going to have a Renault Clio. Quotation marks again. And a comma there, and we're going to have finally a Citroen Saxo. Again, so these are very European kind of small hatchbacks. So we created our array there, and you can see now that in our live kind of preview there, we have our Corsa, Fiesta, Clio, and Saxo, all presented in an array. Now, how would we get information from our array and how we can single out stuff is very simple. So let's say you wanted to single out a piece of, um, you know, one of the kind of outputs in our array. Now, each one has its own index number. So our first one, which is Corsair, will have an index of zero. Our second one will have an index of one. Our third, two, and fourth, three. So it's a bit complicated to kind of understand at first, but it's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is create again another variable, so a variable there, and I'll call this one car1. And our car1 is simply going to equal our cars array, and then if we do our two brackets here, and we want it to equal 0. Now as 0 is classed as the first kind of piece of data in the array, and our first one is Corsa. So as you can see over there in our live preview, it's printed the word Corsa. So if I copied it, and then paste it there, changing up the name of the variable as we can't have them clash. Again, it's at zero, so it displays Corsair in the live preview. But if we change it up to one, it should then display our second piece of data in our array, which is Fiesta. And we can do the same to display all of them. So that's kind of how you can single out single pieces of data within our array. So making sure you change the name of the variable there and the index of the cars. So by doing that, it displays each of them individually. So we can get information or a sole piece of information from a huge piece or huge array list. So if you had hundreds and hundreds of pieces of data within your array, and let's say you only wanted to get a small piece of information, say number 90, 99, then you would put in number 98. And that's how it works. So we can single it out all together. We can also kind of 
find out how much information or how many kind of pieces of data are in our array. As when we were creating lots and lots and lots and you know adding and adding and as further it goes on, we kind of lose track of how much you know kind of data is in our array. And a great way to find out is simply getting um, our cars array, making sure it's got a capital there, cars array dot count. And by doing that, it then gives us or prints the amounts of pieces of data within our array. Which, as you can see, there's four types of models of car, so it prints the number four. Which, again, is brilliant. So, say you was populating a table view, and you wanted to know um, how many kind of table view bars you needed within your application. You can refer back to the count of your array, which, again, equals four, would show four bars in our table view. So, that's a brilliant, kind of simplified, really easy version of how to just simply get data from your array. Now, what if you want to add more stuff to our array? Let's say this is our defined um, array when we build and run our application for our user. But let's say our user wanted to input their own data into the array. So let's say it was creating kind of like a to-do list. So you want to add more and more stuff to our array. So what you simply do is then get our cars variable. And instead of doing dot count, we do dot insert. And we've got new element at index. So the new element we're going to insert would be two quotation marks and a name of another model of car. Which what we're going to do here is a punter which again, a very popular European hatchback. And then at index is where you want to insert it within basically our array. So let's say we got our four there, which will be zero, one, two, three. And to have it inserted at number five, we need to make the index number four. So we do index four there, end it with the parentheses there. And as you can see now, it prints out our kind of array again, so Corsa, Fiesta, Clio, Saxon, and then adds our Punto at the end. So now this time, when we go to cars.count, because we now got our updated lease, uh, list of an array, it now displays five within it. That's because we've added Punto as our kind of fifth car model. So just like at the top here, where we kind of singled out each of them piece of data, we could then simply paste it out, and this time if we change up the yeah, air to number five, and then finally this one is four, which is our at index four, it then, like it does at the top here, displays our fifth um, kind of piece of data in our array to Ponto, which we added there at index four. If I change this up to three, you can see it changes the list in how it displays, and now it's got into number three, and it's pushed the Saxo uh, model of car up into number four. So now in number four here, it displays Saxo. So we go back to there and put that to number four, back to correct it, there we go. And finally, once we got all our data within our array, we wanna be able to kind of display it within our application. And a great way to do that is just simply to print all the cars in our array, which, Sounds very simple, and to do it is just as simple as me explaining how simple it is. So what we simply do is put in for there, and then we do the name of it, which we can simply call it all cars. And what it's simply going to do, all cars in cars, so basically all the kind of information within our array, right, we're simply going to get it, our parentheses there, and what we're going to do is print and then the, between the brackets here, what we're going to do is print all the outcomes in cars. So you see here, it says you got five times, meaning there's five kind of um, piece of data or you know bits within our array. We can press our little eyeball here, and it says five times again. But on the console output here, you can see it put, um, kind of prints it out wherever it would be on your application. So it's kind of like a live kind of um, preview of what it looked like. So let's just say it was like in the table view. Each of these um, pieces of models of car here will be displayed in individual table view sections, depending on how you set it up. So as you can see there, it gets all our cars and then displays it uh, one after the other. Now, if I change something up, like again, if I change this back to three, once it updates, Ponto goes before the Saxo, and there you go. So again, that's how it would work with indexes. I'll put that back to normal. There we go. So let's just think for a moment there. If we would have done this in Objective-C, it would have took us a lot of time. We had to do endless arrays, arrays with objects, and then 
put them all out in the individual strings and it's quite time consuming and just to even to get them to display somewhere or anywhere is you know quite difficult in itself there's a lot can go wrong but as you can see here very very simplified version and it's basically almost just like how you would say you want them to do it so what you would do is go like I want a list of cars and the cars I want a list of are Corsa, Fiesta, Clio, Saxo then I want this car to be displayed individually I want to add a punter into the list and I want it to go in index 4 or the 4th car or 5th car and then I want all the cars to be printed on the screen or displayed so again it's very simple and very easy to do so that's simply how you work with arrays in the Swift language Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up-to-date and in-depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6 and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course the links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.